The Anbernic RG35XX is a year old now and has recently been taken over by its successor, the RG35XX Plus, which I don't have here, but I have this one. It's a slightly more powerful version of the RG35XX. That's gonna be a mouthful every time I have to say it. It's a little bit more powerful and it usually costs a bit more depending on where you're getting your handheld emulators from. Well, WhatGeek.com sent me this RG35XX for review and almost immediately the Plus came out. So, so a review for this thing would be already pretty outdated. And I know the comments would be full of people saying, oh, this thing's old, just get the Plus. Why are you wasting your time on this old thing? Get the Plus model. So instead of a normal review, I want to take a look at this thing and kind of highlight why the old RG35XX is still perfectly viable and why you may want to consider picking this one up over the Plus. It's a bit of a stretch, I know. So here it is, this is the RG35XX. Just to do a quick rundown for the uninitiated, it's got a 3.5 inch 640 by 480 IPS display, which looks great in person. If it's doing any weird color shifting, it's from my camera. You've got your face buttons on the face, which makes sense. Speaker in the bottom right corner, headphone jack on the bottom, USB-C charging port on the bottom, two micro SD slots on the right. One is the internal one for the OS and can also hold some games. And the one on the right is for an optional secondary micro SD card to add more and more games. Power switch at the top of that, along with a reset button underneath, volume rocker on the left side, a mini HDMI port on the top, and on the back you've got four trigger buttons. I have the purple model here and they also sell the Game Boy inspired gray and the transparent white. What Geek also sells this model with an added 128 gigabytes of storage for $10 more, which you're gonna want if you plan to play a lot of PS1 games. The classic RG35XX retails for around $50 to $60 depending on where you're buying your handhelds, and the Plus is only about $10 to $50 dollars more, which is not a ton of money by any means, but when you're somebody who's already looking at budget handhelds, that could be a reason not to purchase the new model. Sometimes that price difference can be a big deciding factor if your budget is very limited. Now again, this was sent to me by WhatGeek, which actually sells the Plus for only $6 more, but as of writing, the old version is on sale, so it's only $45.99, which makes that a $20 difference. Obviously, a sale's not gonna be permanent, but it's probably more likely you're gonna be able to find the old model on sale more often than the new model, at least for now. Now, another factor that may make you want to go for the old one are the color options. Say you're nostalgic for the classic transparent purple Game Boy Color and you want to pick up a purple model like the one I have here. Well, currently that option's only available on the old version. It's not available on the Plus. Here's the thing about the Plus. Sure, it's more powerful, it's got a removable battery, it's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on. It's got lots of handy features that may make it worth that little bit of a price increase, but as far as power is concerned, it's not that much more powerful. It's able to play N64, some Dreamcast games, and some PSP, but what's one thing that those three systems have in common that the RG35 and the Plus do not. They all have thumbsticks. This thing does not have a thumbstick, it's D-pad only. Now, from what I understand, there are ways in the settings that you can program the D-pad to act as a joystick, but you don't want to do that, do you? You want to play Mario 64 using a D-pad to move around and spin Bowser and throw him and stuff? That doesn't sound like a good time to me. In that case, if you really wanted to play something that has a lot of thumbstick use, you could opt instead for the RG35XXH, which I have here for review that I'm gonna be reviewing in a separate video. So, cause it's got the thumbsticks. Now, to be fair, there is more to the Plus than just the slightly beefier processor. The Plus does also have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support, which the original is lacking. So if you wanna to connect to a Bluetooth controller while docking this thing to your TV, you can't do that. You would need a wired controller or a wireless controller with a dongle, and you would need the means to connect that to the USB-C port on the bottom. Oh yeah, by the way, you can also dock these things, unlike the MIU Mini Plus. Now one big thing that is probably only a temporary selling point of the RG35XX over the Plus is Garlic OS. It's a custom fan-made firmware which just makes the UI and the whole user experience a little less ugly than the stock OS. It's more simplified and straightforward, you've got custom themes, better performance, and the ability to jump into your game's most recent save state from the menu. It became so popular that Anbernic even started shipping the RG35XX with Garlic OS already installed. It has the stock OS out of the box, but then it has the option to switch to Garlic OS. Now weirdly, the version of Garlic OS I have installed only has two themes. It has like a Metal Slug theme and then some random anime. Currently, and I might be wrong about this, but from what I understood looking into it, Garlic OS 2.0 is an alpha for the Plus, but from what I'm hearing, it's not quite 
there yet compared to Garlic OS on the original model. That could all change by the time I even upload this video, who knows. Of course, if you're patient, you could just pay for the Plus and still get all the features that the original has with the improvements of the Plus and then just add a stable version of Garlic OS later when it's available. That all said, while I do not have the Plus here with me, what Geek does also offer it, as I mentioned, so if you want to get that one, knock yourself out. Otherwise, if you mostly plan to use this thing for Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, SNES, and all the 16-bit and older stuff, as well as some PS1 stuff, save yourself a few bucks and get the original model. So there you have it. Obviously, it's a bit of a stretch. If you have the funds, sure, go for the plus. But if you want to save that little bit of money and maybe you want the purple color, whatever the case, the RG35XX is still perfectly viable. Game Boy, Super Nintendo, PlayStation. If you're only really playing those, then just get this. Personally, if I'm just sitting here playing Pokemon, I'll save a couple bucks, get the RG35XX. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Again, I have that review of the RG35XXH coming up. I'm gonna be hopefully reviewing other handheld emulators and other handheld things, plus my usual stuff. If you're not new here, I got keyboard reviews in the works. I've got just different stuff. I got a monitor review coming up. Uh, yeah, so subscribe for that. If you haven't seen any of my other stuff, I've got videos here. Make sure you click here to subscribe and thank you for watching. I'm out of here.